Okay, I think this is going to be the last video of this series. The only thing left is I drew just roughly drew some uh, buffalo here on his uh, robe. So we'll see what happens. It's a make or break thing right now. Don't really take him apart here. So over here I've squeezed out some raw sienna, I believe that's the name of it. Yep. Some burnt sienna, which is this one here, and some raw umber as Judy removes my hat. So starting with the burnt sienna. I'm going to get me some wash out here. And we will just I don't want really dark colors on this. Just light, light indications. Not a little too much paint there, so I gotta wash that out. Where there, I told you, Judy and I went down and early voted yesterday, or when was it? Friday. Friday. Because we live in a small town, or outside a small town, and I bet you there's going to be lots of people voting. So. so far. So make sure you go out and vote. Hopefully for the right candidates because we need some change in this country.
with some burnt umber, again a wash, you want a thin wash. Sort of an egg shape on his head there. Put a little dark puff on the back of his tail there. Wondering where the Indian is chasing these buffalo. He's over here on the other side. <laughs> but <laughs> you're just going to have to imagine that. buffalo around this area. The Indians are recapturing their culture. The Cherokees around here, we live on a Cherokee reservation. And by reservation, I don't mean we live. It, it, it's kind of a strange thing. The Oklahoma was set up with the Indian tribes so the, the whole state basically is divided up I'll use some raw sienna up here for his hump So basically, almost every anybody that lives in Oklahoma is actually on an Indian reservation. But within these reservations, the tribes, various tribes, have certain rights, like the Cherokees or around here have casinos all over their reservation. The Seneca 
tribe has reservations on their reservations. The Pawnee tribe has reasons on or uh, can't, am I saying reservations? Mm -hmm. If so, I mean casinos. And here, where we are, all the, a number of tribes butt up against each other. The, the the divisions of these tribes butt up against each other. So there was there are uh, casinos all over the place. I'd say within 50 miles of where we live, there must be at least, oh hell, I'll bet you there's a dozen casinos, easily. Okay, where's my... Oklahoma was set up with the five civilized tribes originally. I shouldn't talk while I'm doing stuff. The Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Seminole, and the Creek. But once you get away from the eastern part of the state, you have many other tribes. Comanche, Kiowa, they're down in the southwestern corner, and Apache, they're all here. Okay, now, let's try this again. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm rubbing, getting rid of all my pencil lines. And as I'm doing this, I'm lighting, lightening up the colors, which I like because it gives a... gives the robe a used appearance. There's one pencil line right there that I don't like. I should get rid of that. Anyway. Okay. Now the next step and last step is varnishing. Or yes, varnishing. So that's what we're going to do next, and to do that we have to move over to my workbench. Okay, we've got all the pieces laying out here, body, head, feathers, neck piece. I got my uh, polyurethane warm satin. They just rechanged the name of this within the last couple months. This is what I put on all my carpet. This has worked for me for... Oh, since back in the 70s, 1970s. And I have carvings up at the house that have been varnished with this back then. And they look just as clean and crisp as the day that I did it. So, I recommend that. That's what I use. I go down to Walmart and I buy me these cheap brushes, about a buck a piece. Yep, get back here. 
made in China naturally. I go through them and I pull out any loose hairs I can find. I try to get all of them. I won't, but I try to get all of them. I just have to watch it. And these things, if you clean them after each time you use them, you, you can use them about three or four times before they're on any good and just toss them. But they're great for what I do. So, the interesting thing that's going to happen right now is as soon as I put this varnish on here, Judy's getting tired holding the camera. As soon as I put the varnish on here, all these colors are going to deepen. And the true color will come out. They'll be kind of shiny right now, but they won't eventually shine. So now I'm going to let Judy rest her arm and pull it down a little. Now as you're varnishing this, the varnish will sit on the surface where you have lots of paint, like here on the bead strips. But over here, it's going to soak in quite a bit. So you sort of have to flood, flood the paint on there to make sure you get it coated real good. And again, as you're doing this, watch out for any brush hairs. I haven't ever seen a, a brush yet over the years that doesn't lose a occasional hair. There. Now all the colors, everything's showing up really nice. Now on here on the back, you've got a lot of ingrain coming down. And boy, that's just going to draw this varnish right up into the wood to where uh, on the areas that don't have the ingrain, it won't soak in so much. So you really have to be careful. See how dark it is here where you're get drawing into the end grain more compared to how light it is up on top here. So you should put this varnish on there. It just soaks it up. Which is good. And the more varnish you seem to put on there, the more it just disappears up into the wood. So you have to put quite a bit on there. You're going to get it all on there. Now, where you have the uh, pretty solid paint on the area, like the beaded strips here, I use a paper towel. Don't use a cloth towel. A cloth towel is going to leave lint. A paper towel will work just fine as long as you don't rub it hard. If you just sort of lightly go over the surface and wipe off the majority of the varnish. You won't find much back here because it all soaked in. Okay? And then I'm going to get me a clamp. Find me a clamp here. there to dry. And move on to the face. Now when I put varnish on the face, I'm going to really lay it on there thick. Because it's going to soak up, soak up almost all of it. 
Now personally, I like that amber color. That gives your carving a warm look, which I like. And which collectors like too, I guess, because I've given lots of carvings over the years. See how much it darkened his face and how much it soaked it up. See, it's all flat again. So I'm just going to put some more on there. There. Soaked it in completely up here on his face. Look at that. Another spot. I have to come back and touch that up. You'll never get all those little spots when you're painting with black. There's just, you got all these deep valleys and everything. So, I'll come back and kind of get the majority of the stain off of these braids because the paint is pretty thick there. And I don't want it to have any runs. Soaked, soaked up that stain again. Looks good. Give me another clamp. What's next? Feathers. Now these, these won't soak up any paint. The paint has been real heavy on them. Another clamp. You never have enough clamps. There we go. And last but not least, probably have enough varnish in here.
So, there we have it varnished. Now, we'll let this dry and I think uh, we'll hang, keep the video until tomorrow and we'll come back, assemble everything, glue it together and put it all together on its base and that'll be the end of it. Okay, so until then I'll talk to you later and if you like what you see here and you haven't subscribed, just click on the subscribe button please and follow us along because we're going to have more projects coming up in the future. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, the carvings, paints all dry. Everything's ready to put together. So, let's start. Got a piece of cloth here to protect my paint. So we're just gonna take these out. Toothpick. Add one laying over here. I'll just get a couple. We're going to need them. Got my five minute epoxy over here. Okay, squeezed out an equal amount. Didn't look equal, but it was. Mix it up really good. Get a little on my stick there. Now that's going to take a while to uh, set up before I can let go of it. I don't want to clamp anything because I don't want to mess up my base, mark up my base, or mark up the carving. So I'm just going to sit here and hold that until it clamps up. Okay, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, this is set up over here on my base. I just put some rubber bands around that just to, just to make sure that it's not going to move. And it, it's not going to move because it was solid when I put those rubber bands on there. What I'm doing now is mixing me up another bunch of epoxy and making sure I've got enough to do the next job.
Now before I anchor him, I'm going to dip the smallest end of my Thanks, here's a little bitty bead of epoxy on the end of that, see that? I'm going to take that and very carefully put that on his eye. And this is going to give me a little globe which catches the light. Let me see a little bit hanging on the edge of the eyelash which I do not want. See you can see that. See? Still got that little That little spot moves as you move around the room. It looks much better than a painted white spot, I think. Okay, now. Give me a nice big dollop of this on here. I went ahead and grew, glued on the uh, little front decoration there while it was sitting there. And again, this is five minute epoxy, which you can get done at Home Depot or Lowe's or, or any hardware shop. I use a lot of it. in there and I'm going to pull that out make sure it's got lots on it and it does. Put that on there and quickly because it's already starting to set. I'll put some on my feather here. that into the corresponding hole right there. And turn it around. I want to make sure I've got the proper spot for it. I don't want that faux feather sticking too high. That's about it right there. Okay, so we got that, heads on, everything's looking good. I think she looks pretty good. She looks pretty good. Boy, I'd probably be it's tied to the stake and roasted if they, he ever found out what I just said. He looks good. And my glue is already set. You don't have much time to work, but this is the best stuff. Otherwise, you're going to have to sit around here and wait and wait and wait and wait till you can go on to the next job. So, like I said, I've got one more thing to do after this. And as soon as this sets up, we're going to do that. Okay, back over here at the paint table. Just one more thing I forgot. When uh, I varnished this and the varnish set up, the feathers were real bright and shiny, as was the beaded strip here. 
So to take care of that, I use this uh, tester's dull coat. It's called dull coat. There's a new can of it, dull coat. See right there. Copa Impo dot Impo Dota. Costs five dollars and seventy nine cents. And what I do is I take. Just pretend this is a carving, okay? Take it up real good. Hold it out there. Make sure you aim it the right way. And just, that's enough right there. And that will kill the sheen, shine, on that area that you sprayed. But be careful with it. Don't, uh, don't overdo it or you'll get a flash where everything will turn white. You have to be real careful because that stuff is a lacquer and this stuff is a mineral but mineral, mineral spirits based. Uh, I don't know if it's mineral spirits based. That's what you use to clean your brushes. So it has something to do with, with the mineral spirits. And uh, those two things don't mix. But if you do it real lightly, you can get away with it. This is what I do. Okay, got my toothbrush here. Not that I need to brush my teeth. The t title of this piece is Whispers or Winter Whispers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a few snowflakes here on his shoulder, on the wool. So I want to make sure I mask off the areas that I don't want any spray on. Okay, and I'm going to shield his head here. So I've got my toothbrush here. I'm going to dip it in there. Got a little bit of white paint here. I mix some water with it so it sprays real easy. There, see there? Did you see me do that? I'll do it again. Move your hands in the way. You probably learned this in grade school like I did. Like that. See that? <laughs> Judy's back here complaining. So I'm going to cover his head. There we go. That's plenty right there. That'll carry the theme. I pronounce him finished. Got a little down on the the skin, so I think he turned out pretty good myself. I like him. I like the expression on his face. I like the face. So anyway, that'll be it for this video series. And uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed. Go ahead and subscribe to my post because we're, I'm thinking of starting to do videos again. I'm not so interested in, well, it's coming up the winter, so I got my brush burnt. I got all the leaves picked up. So I got lots of, Judy and I have lots of time on our hands, so we're going to make a few videos. So anyway, subscribe and when we post the first one, first segment of the next one, you'll be notified and uh, you can follow right along with us and tell your friends if they might be interested too. So thanks for coming along on this project and uh, till the next one I'll talk to you later.